Over the last week, this design of my first completely stock helicopter in the Breaking Ground DLC has garnered a lot of attention on Reddit and across my social media platforms. I felt that this video was necessary and hopefully helpful to you. I'm going to go over how I designed this vehicle and how you can go about designing your first helicopter. Stay tuned. Flash out. Okay, so this is the Mark I Contra Striker. The idea behind this design originally was to do something that looked sort of like the Sikorsky Raider, which is like a new high-speed helicopter. In fact, the Sikorsky has a push rotor on the tail of the vehicle, which I found to be less than desirable in the physics engine and Kerbal Space Program, so I actually modified that, designed my own vehicle, and then replaced what would have been the tail push rotor with this nose cone for the aesthetic appeal. The helicopter itself is equipped with four guided rockets. It can fly for about one hour of in-game time. It can achieve an altitude of about 6,500 meters and fly at about 30 meters per second. It is powered completely by a fuel cell, which is right here, and the oxidizer and the liquid fuel that power that fuel cell are located right here. And I've got, just as you can see, about 10 units of liquid fuel, 12 units of oxidizer, both in this tiny little, uh, tiny little fuel tank. I've got the Mark I command pod, and uh, everything that is aerodynamic about the vehicle is achieved with control surfaces. So all of the inputs, both at the tail with my ailerons and on the little winglets, as well as the rotors themselves, are all control surfaces. And if you look at the dimensions and kind of the way that the aircraft breaks down, I'll go ahead turn on my center of mass, you can see that the powertrain and the rotor itself sits directly above the center of mass. When you go about designing your helicopter, ensure that your powertrain is directly over your center of mass. You might find that you have to tweak it by moving it a little bit forward, a little bit to the rear. If you raise it away from the fuselage of the aircraft, you'll find that the aircraft hangs but loses maneuverability. And if you clip it down too much into the aircraft, you'll find that you regain some maneuverability, but you'll lose control very quickly. So it's just a matter of trial and error. I will say that this design was probably the most challenging thing in all of my years of Kerbal that, that I've gone about designing. And I'm certainly pleased with where it's at right now. So now I'll go about explaining how to design the powertrain itself using the um, Breaking Ground DLC parts because I think that's where most folks are struggling right now. So what I've done here, and you'll have to forgive that I've got some clipping with my SAS modules, is I've got a rotation servo with its motor completely disabled st sitting just beneath a standard rotor which is actually the engine this rotor is powered with electricity that electricity is achieved through the fuel cell and this top rotor is set to rotate clockwise when it rotates clockwise the servo that it is sitting on since it is disengaged will automatically rotate in the opposite direction so that's how we actually achieve the torque required to move the rotor blades if you look at the rotor blades themselves for this aircraft, since it's a little heavier, I've gone with the aeroplane control surface, the FAT455. Uh, smaller control surfaces will do, but I certainly recommend that you use control surfaces, and I've actually elected to disable pitch, yaw, and roll, although you could choose to enable some of them to increase your cyclic control. I found that rather than enabling those control surfaces, I have just added additional SAS, which seems to make for a much more stable flight. I've affixed those rotor blades to cubic octagonal struts. Those cubic octagonal struts are in turn fixed to the rotation servos. These rotation servos, if you look at them, I've set it to, a, instead of allow full rotation, I've set it to an angle limit, and I have found that for this, this design, a minus one to a 21 for a degree angle limit for the top clockwise rotating rotor uh, gives me an appropriate amount of control. If you look at the bottom, you'll see that I have in fact completely reversed the angle limit of the rotor blade. Because remember, the bottom rotor will be spinning counterclockwise while the top rotor is spinning clockwise. This means that my angle limit has to be reversed, and it also means my control inputs in the axis menu must also be reversed. So that's how the powertrain is designed. 
I encourage you to take some notes and listen to it several times. It absolutely took me a very long time uh, to make sure that I got it right. So once you've got your powertrain completely designed for your helicopter, you can go into the new action group menu for axis groups and begin assigning your axis groups. For this aircraft, if you go to custom one, you'll see that I engage my standard rotor and my fuel cell array. So I press one and my standard rotor will immediately go to 100% output and my fuel cell will start powering that rotor so the aircraft can fly. Now if you come down to my axis groups, you'll look at my translation controls and you see that for translate up and down, I have my rotation servos. So for the top one, I have uh, my rotation servos set for inverted control and they'll do so at an incremental way. This just means that when I push my translate up or down, so in my case I and K, I will add a percentage of incremental control to the deflection of my rotor blades. I have one of them set to inverted and the other one set to normal. This is so that my when I'm applying collective control and those aeroplane surfaces uh, begin to rotate, they rotate in complementary ways. You'll find that this is kind of challenging to do. The easiest way to do it is to put your servos on the rotors and then attach cubic octagonal struts to those servos. Do your top set of blades first and then grab the octagonal struts, flip them over and apply them completely uh, upside down to the bottom set of, uh, of rotor blades so that way it's much easier to uh, to begin designing how your collective is going to function and again it just takes uh, a little bit of logical analysis and some uh, some patience and some trial and error so at the end of the day um, that's how the helicopter itself is designed another challenge was then designing the rockets so the payload here it can carry four when it has all four it flies kind of like a brick because these things are pretty heavy uh, the rockets themselves uh, are, are pretty uh, pretty basic. I've got a basic nose cone on the front um, and then three little Oscar B fuel tanks. All of them are completely empty to reduce mass uh, and then I've clipped in some basic fins to give them kind of that um, that structure and a little bit more aerodynamic maneuverability and then I've put a, a little small inline reaction wheel so it has um, some authority and then a small probe core so basically when SAS is engaged this five electric charge um, and the SAS will allow this thing to fly relatively straight. If we look at the rear of these rockets, you'll see that I've put some little Separatron one, run one solid rocket boosters in the rear of each of these rockets, and that's how uh, we achieve power for those rockets. So then let's go ahead and see how this thing flies, and I'll kind of explain how I gain control and some tips and tricks to testing and flying your own helicopters as you go about uh, doing so in this new DLC. All right, so in this case, once I'm on the launch pad, first thing I'm gonna do is press T to engage SAS, and then I'm gonna press one, which will engage my rotors and my fuel cell. So you'll see that I am now draining liquid fuel and oxidizer in order to power my rotors. Uh, as my rotors gain torque, my aircraft is gonna naturally start to lift off. In my case, I can apply some collective with I, which will allow it to climb. And you'll see the aircraft immediately begins to climb. Because I have all four of my rockets on board, it's going to fly really heavy, so I'm going to go ahead and fire my rockets. With those rockets now off board, this thing's going to fly much easier. Something I didn't mention earlier is how to deal with torque. So this is a contra-rotating aircraft, uh, meaning that I've got two rotor blades rotating in opposite directions that's required to reduce the torque caused by any rotary aircraft. It is 100% possible to use a single rotor blade in Kerbal Space Program, but you would absolutely need to put a tail rotor on to negate the torque caused by the rotation of the top one. So, as I previously stated, when pressing I and K to increase and decrease collective, that's going to cause the aircraft to climb or to decrease its altitude. And then for this aircraft, it'll fly forward with relatively decent control. But with all the helicopters I've messed with so far in Kerbal Space Program, whenever you get over about 30 meters per second, the nose tends to want to climb up. There's a couple ways to deal with it. Um, the most common is just adding SAS whenever you're in the design stage. That'll help to a point. This aircraft has three SAS modules on board. Once that no longer helps and you find that the nose wants to climb, the easiest way to keep it down is to apply negative uh, collective. 
Uh, so just press K to decrease collective. It'll naturally bring the aircraft's nose back down. And then if at any point your nose is pointed at the ground and you're about to crash, if you press I, it will naturally bring the nose of the aircraft up. So that's the explanation for this aircraft, the Mark I Contra Striker. I hope that it's been helpful to you. I hope that you're able to design some of your own helicopters in the near future. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel to show your support. I've also got a link to this aircraft so you can fly it yourself on the Steam Workshop that is in the comment section. And the link to the demo showing off this aircraft's capabilities is also uh, linked on screen right now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.